Hello guys, my name is Ravan Sood. Today we will discuss about Agile methodology for software development. I am sure that you have heard about this term which is called as Agile methodology. Lot, lot of about. But what is basically Agile methodology? Agile methodology is basically used in software houses where basically uh, the requirement if, if it's not clear 100%, so we use the Agile methodology in that case particularly. Agile is basically uh, an iterative, incremental or evolutionary approach for software development. Why? Because see, it's basically, it's basically this, uh, the, 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 the base is that we divide the work uh, on a shorter period of time, for example, one to four weeks. We develop, uh, we divide the work on that particular period of time, which is like, for example, uh, if it's a work of two months. We divide in two uh, two sections. Yeah, like four weeks and then four weeks, two sections. Now after four weeks, we give a demo to a customer, and on basis of that demo, we evaluate the product and uh, uh, fixes uh, the fix the product. And after four weeks, we give another demo, which includes the feedback of previous uh, the previous feedback of customer. And in the second demo, we try to cover all the requirements, including customer feedback. And uh, at the end of the eighth week, the uh, whole product will be delivered uh, to customer. This is called an iterative or evolutionary uh, approach. <coughs> Let me give you an example that the agile methodology is totally different as compared to the waterfall model. Because see, the agile methodology is based on incremental or iterative approach like uh, we divide the work in short shorter period of time give a demo to customer and on the basis of customer feedback uh, we evaluate the product for example if you are let me give you an example that if you are making uh, uh, for example we are making a social media based uh, website uh, so we use that particular approach of agile in that case <coughs> but uh, when uh, when the, see the customer doesn't have the clear requirement of the social network, he actually wants 100% requirement is not uh, clear. So we use in that particular case the agile methodology. But uh, if we compare the agile methodology with the waterfall model, uh, see the waterfall model is based on the sequence based. Like first we uh, define the get the complete requirement. After requirement analysis, we now we do the development and configuration. Then we do the uh, system integration testing. Then we do new quality assurance. Then UAT and then the production deployment. This is a sequence based approach. But uh, both the uh, agile and uh, the uh, the waterfall model they both have their own pros and cons. If we talk about agile methodology, agile methodology is the, there's any issue or problem from customer side like uh, it will arise at a very very early stage <laughs> let me give an example that if you are making a social media website for a customer after four weeks when you give a demo to customer he will give you his feedback that uh, he is satisfied with your product with your demo or maybe he is not satisfied or maybe he said that uh, this is not his requirement so at the very early stage, <coughs> you get the feedback of a customer. But if you talk about the waterfall model, in the waterfall model, what happens is we, we do the complete requirement, we do the complete development, and then at the stage of testing, at the stage of QAP, he knows, the customer knows that this is his particular requirement, this is particular his product. At that particular time, he may say that this is not his requirement and you have to redo the work. You have to redo, redevelop the work and this is a very painful situation in particular case of waterfall model. So if we talk about agile, agile there's, there's this particular advantage that if there is any issue or problem in a product, it will arise at a very early stage in the agile methodology. As compared to the waterfall model, uh, if there is any issue or problem in the in the product, it will arise at a very later stage. So uh, it's just a comparison of agile and the waterfall model. <coughs> Coming back to the 
again methodology. Uh, there are some uh, very basic terminology which are used in the agile methodology. Let me uh, let me try to explain these terms. Uh, the term uh, named as a story. What is basically story? A story is basically a use case that describes what the developer will do for the user. Okay. Uh, coming back to again the same uh, requirement, uh, same story. Like <coughs> customer says that I want uh, I want a social media based website. Like user came there and shared their for uh, photos on it, shared their uh, comments and shared their feedback, etc., etc. So it's a, just a high level requirement. So we can say these are the so this is a story of which uh, which basically requires the which describes the deliverable of a customer. It's just a story. After the proceeding, we divide the this particular story in a requirement. How we will divide in that requirement? Like first, we will what we will do that we divide this story in particular requirement. For example, we will say that okay, customer first, customer has to do the registration. Customer can uh, customer can upload his uh, upload his photo, upload his video. Customer can give feedback. Customer can share uh, the can share with its uh, colleague uh, with its friends. Customer can like uh, kind of like his friends photo or video. Customer can share the comment, uh, can, uh, share the video uh, comment on the on the Twitter as well, etc. So these are the requirements. <coughs> these are basically the main requirements which we can say as a. This is the set of requirements is called as backlog. This is called as backlog in terms of agile methodology. Here is uh, there is another uh, term which is called a sprint. What is a sprint? Basically, a sprint is basically an iterative or uh, incremental thing. Like, for example, we divide the total work into one to four week of period of time. One to four week of time box occurred when you focus your work on delivering on the prioritized requirement. Let me give an example. If you have, for example, uh, for example, you have hundred requirements. So you would say that uh, there would be two sprints. In the first sprint, we will cover one to fifty requirements, and in the second sprint, uh, we will cover from fifty-one to hundred requirements. Okay. So there would be two sprints, and in the after uh, end of every end of every sprint, like we will give a demo to a customer, and on the basis of feedback of a customer, we will evaluate the or increment the uh, product or uh, product. So this is called as a sprint, one to four week time box period in which we divide the work uh, so that uh, we will give a demo to customer on the base of sprint of work. This is called a sprint basically. A scrum. What is scrum? A scrum is just people, team of people, basically the, what we can say the core team who is working on the product is called as a scrum. A scrum uh, has many people like for example the uh, for example, the developer, the architect, the scrum master, the designer. So the core team who is working on the product is basically called as uh, scrum. And there is you know, another person who is called as scrum master. Scrum master is a uh, totally different. If you talk about, if you compare it to the project manager, project manager is a different person. A scrum master is basically just a facilitator who is basically interacting with the <coughs> customer and just Facilitating or guiding the team. He is just a facilitator. He is not a honor or a, uh, no, what you can say, the reporting manager. He is not a reporting manager. He is just a facilitator of uh, of a team or just guiding the team that what is the requirement that needs to be done. Okay. There is another term which is known as sprint retrospective. What is this thing, sprint retrospective? It is very important which we occurs after after the Sprint review and prior to the next sprint planning. What is the purpose of a sprint retrospective? Basically, the sprint retrospective is basically a review of the sprint. For example, if we have around uh, 50 requirements which we need to cover in the sprint, or uh, at the in the sprint review meeting, we would say that how went well the sprint, what could be improved in the sprint, what we will commit. To improve in the next sprint. Uh, so, what was the performance of the our sprint? If it is good, bad, medium, etc. 
So basically, uh, the strain ratio, the perspective is basically a review of the strain of a workload which we have delivered in the time period of uh, one to four weeks. So on the basis of feedback, on our own judgment, we review our own work or our our so what we can improve so that it can be delivered in the uh, next strain. So strain retrospective is just a review of the strain. <coughs> there is another term which is called as burn down chart. What is burn down chart basically? Burn down chart is basically uh, the it is basically a chart to uh, describe the tracking of progress against the task plan for the sprint. The sprint burn down chart is a public display chart showing the remaining work in the sprint backlog and updated every day. It gives a simple view of the sprint progress. There are basically uh, two axes. The horizontal axis of the sprint burn down chart shows the days in a sprint, while the vertical axis shows the amount of work remaining each day. Let me give you in. Uh, let me try to explain the this particular chart. Based on the x-axis, there are number of days in a sprint, and on the uh, this y-axis or vertical axis, we have the remaining work. For example, uh, for this particular chart, you can see from Burnham chart, we see that there are 30 tasks which we have to cover on this particular sprint. Okay. And we have 20 days in the sprint. Okay, so what happened that on each, uh, uh, as we are progressing, for example, if we talk about fifth day, like we can see from here, from fifth day, there are around uh, approximately 20 tasks are remaining. Uh, like if this was the actual, but if we talk about this is the ideal. So, this is, uh, if you talk about actual, so as per the ideal situation, on the fifth day, only the twenty day, twenty tasks should be remaining. But as per the actual, if you talk about, there were around approximately, if I'm not wrong, around twenty five tasks were remaining. So, uh, the the burn down chart, purpose of the burn down chart is just to describe the progress of uh, of your of the sprint progress. It will just describe that as per the number of days mentioned in the sprint, how many tasks, how many tasks are remaining. So it is just, uh, just to describe the progress of your <coughs> progress of your work. So on the on the uh, the horizontal axis there are number of days in a sprint, and on the x y axis there are number of uh, tasks remaining. So it just describes the uh, it just described the work. Uh, it just described the number of tasks remaining as per the sprint. <laughs> so that's all from my side. Uh, hope you like this video. Uh, I have tried to simplify the terminology used in the agile methodology in a very very simple way. And uh, in the last, I would say just a uh, very um, very simple comment. I would say that. Agile methodology should be used in the software development project where the scope is not 100% clear. For example, website development or the, for example, the mobile based uh, project where the requirements of customer is not 100% sure. Okay, uh, he knows only the high level requirement, so we should use the agile methodology. Uh, however, if the the requirement of customer is 100% view, 100% show, and uh, customer doesn't have any ambiguity about uh, the about the uh, for, for time about the requirement. So we should use the waterfall model. Also, the projects which are based on shorter time periods, like for example web development and mobile based development, we should use the design methodology. Whereas the projects which are having a longer period of time, for example, Oracle ERP implementation <coughs> or any project like which is based on, uh, uh, for example, any uh, project which we are doing for, uh, for the bank, for example, ERP implementation or the CR, uh, or ERP implementation or a big, a bigger project like CRM implementation, we should use the waterfall model. So. 
I would say that both products should roll my methodologies have their own pros and cons and it should be used according to their pros and cons if appropriate. So thanks a lot for your time and that's all from my side. Hope you like this video. If you like please share it with your friends and colleagues. Also please subscribe to my channel and if you have any query <coughs> regarding the brand methodology, I would love to answer your question. So that's all from my side and thanks a lot for your time and thanks a lot.